Uh-oh, by the look on your face, I can tell the volleyball tournament didn't go well. Not at all. We lost our first game against our biggest rival. To make things even worse, there was this horrible girl, Virginia, on the other team. She was being especially awful during the game, making faces at me, sticking her foot under the net to trip me every time the refs weren't looking, trying to distract me every time I served the ball. It was the worst. Man, Virginia sounds like a real pain in the neck. I wouldn't want to play against an opponent like that. Tell me about it. I have to play her two more times this week. Oh, I really don't like her. Maybe the history app can take us to meet someone who's faced tough times against tough opponents. <sighs> Good idea. I'll take any advice I can get. Where are we? It looks like a church. But a church? In the middle of a battle? It looks like the app brought us to Normandy, France on June 7th, 1944. No way. The app brought us to Normandy right after D-Day during World War II? Just a day ago, troops from the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom invaded the beaches at Normandy in northern France, the greatest invasion in human history, which helped rid the world of the evil of the Nazis, ending Hitler's reign of terror once and for all. This is the most exciting day of my entire life! Wow, this is a big deal. But let's be careful. It sounds like we're in the middle of a lot of fighting. Wait, see those two soldiers over there? Maybe they can help us. Excuse us! <gasps> Children! Are, are you alright? Have you sustained any wounds? No, sir, we're alright. We're not injured. My name is Layla, and this is my little brother, Leo. We're actually visiting to learn about how to deal with difficult opponents. And I bet we can learn a lot from you, especially right in the middle of World War II. Phew! Well, now that we know you kids aren't hurt, I'm sure we can be of some assistance to you for a few minutes. We are very busy trying to help these wounded soldiers recover. My name is Kenneth J. Moore. And my name is Robert E. Wright. We're both American combat medics currently serving in the U.S. Army's 101st Airborne Division, also known as the Screaming Eagles. Airborne? Like the sky? Like getting to fly planes? Even better, we get to jump out of them. Cool. That's actually how we landed here. We're paratroopers, which means we parachuted behind enemy lines before dawn yesterday, and we're among the first to land in Normandy during the D-Day invasion. You parachuted down here? Wow, what a wild ride. But how do all of you know where to land when you're up there? <laughs> well, we really don't. The pilot navigates and we jump and hope for the best. Right here got really lucky with his jump. I sure did. I landed super close to where we are now. I spotted this church, the Church of St. Combe and St. Damien, and headed straight here. Moore, on the other hand, <laughs> let's just say his ride was a lot wilder than mine. <laughs> you can say that again. What happened? Well, I wasn't carrying any weapons with me, so one of my unit members gave me a grenade, just in case I needed to protect myself when I landed. When I touched down, I heard some noises close by. Fearing for my life, I quickly pulled out the pen on the grenade. <gasps> oh no! What was it? Turned out it wasn't an enemy soldier. It was... a cow. I quickly needed to figure out how to get rid of the live grenade I was holding in my hand without drawing any attention to my location. Not necessarily an easy task, mind you. Luckily, I found a well and tossed it in there to explode out of harm's way. Crisis averted. After a bit, I saw a church tower in the not-too-far-off distance and made my way here. That is a wild ride. You got really lucky, Mr. Moore. <laughs> I can laugh about it now, but in the moment, it was very tense. I'm just lucky you found this place. When I first spotted the church, I knew it would make a great place for an aid post. As medics, we didn't have much time to waste. We got straight to work helping as many men as we could, with our only requirement being that all weapons be left outside. Wright and I walk around the fields bringing in any men who need medical attention. It's looking like it'll be up to around 80 men that we will have helped. Unfortunately, many of our supplies were lost during our jump, and I don't think anyone will be coming to resupply us anytime soon. So we've just been making do with what we have. We got lucky again that there is a village water pump nearby. It's been really helpful for treating and rehydrating the men. Hold on, I see another wounded soldier entering the church. Let me go help him. Things must be non-stop for you, huh? There's never a slow moment when you've got lives to save. While our conditions aren't perfect, we've organized ourselves to be as efficient as possible. We've made decent use of our space. The pews make nice spots for the men to rest, and we treat them according to how urgent their injuries are. Right! Make way! We've got a soldier in desperate need of medical attention! 
Wait a minute. That's a German soldier. No way. You're actually going to help the enemy? Seems like we shouldn't, right? But this place is neutral ground, and every human life deserves dignity and compassion, especially when they're suffering. But do you think if the shoe were on the other foot, that the Germans would actually help wounded American soldiers? To be honest, I don't know. But I choose not to think about things that way. This is our current reality, and our duty is to help anyone who comes through those church doors, whether they are German or American. Every life is valuable, and it's our job to help. Wow, I don't know if I could ever be like you. Sure you could. Uh, I don't know about that, especially with someone like that girl, Virginia. Gee, thanks, Leo. See, I have this rival back home, and she's been really awful to me. I don't think I'd have it in me to help her out if she had a problem. Your feelings aren't wrong. It's hard to show kindness to someone who's never shown you kindness. The Germans are our enemy, but at the end of the day, we believe that it is important to treat others the way we would like to be treated, even if our enemies wouldn't do the same for us. Speaking of treating others, right? We've got a lot of work to do right now. Leo, Layla, do you think you could help us tend to these soldiers? Give them water and hand us supplies when we ask for them? We could really use the help. Sir, yes sir! Absolutely! You can count on us! All of these soldiers, both German and American, are so lucky to have been under your care, Mr. Wright and Mr. Moore. Your compassion is really moving. Yeah! At first I thought it was crazy to want to help the enemy, but now I see that kindness goes a long way. I still need to do what's right and treat others the way I want to be treated, without expecting them to do the same for me. Agreed. You two have really shown me that doing the right thing doesn't have to start with others showing me kindness first. I can be compassionate to an opponent like Virginia just because she's a person who deserves decency. That's right, Layla. It might not be easy, but that's why it's not called the easy rule. It's called the golden rule because there is tremendous value in demonstrating a caring attitude toward one another. That makes a lot of sense. Thanks for all your help, Mr. Wright and Mr. Moore. Leo and I have learned a lot from your brave and kind actions here today. Good luck and stay safe. Take care, children. Goodbye. How was the volleyball tournament? Did Virginia behave herself today? You'll never guess what happened. Everything we learned from Mr. Wright and Mr. Moore, I actually got to put into action. Really? What happened? Well, the game started off just like last time with Virginia making faces at me and being just a really poor sport. But this one time when she jumped up to spike the ball, she rolled her ankle when she landed. After seeing how Mr. Moore and Mr. Wright helped soldiers on both sides, I wanted to follow their example. Rather than making fun of Virginia, I went over, helped her off the ground, and helped her walk over to the school nurse. Whoa! That's really big of you, Layla! Mr. Wright and Mr. Moore taught me the importance of showing compassion and how I should treat people the way I want to be treated. I doubt that Virginia would have helped me, but I knew what the right thing to do was. Even though Virginia was an awful opponent, at the end of the day, she still deserved dignity through her injury. I guess Mr. Wright did teach us to do the right thing, and Mr. Moore taught us to have more compassion for others. You know, this time, I actually agree with your corny joke, but still, why are you the way that you are? If you like time traveling with us, watch more of our adventures at PragerUKids.com. And parents, don't forget to subscribe.